43 by each in section 1 but you shall meditate there in day and night Rabbi Yossi emphasizes the deep importance of meditating constantly on the Torah he says that people must accept upon themselves the yoke of the kingdom of heaven when they go to sleep since everyone tastes death at night one and I besought Hashem at that time saying Adonai Elohim you began to show your servant Devarim 323 to 24 Rabbi Yossi opened with then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and Pray to Hashem Yeshayah 382 come and see how powerful is the force of the Torah and how superior it is to anything else for whoever is occupied with the Torah does not fear the higher or lower beings nor fear evil incidents in the work because he is attached to the tree of life which is the Torah and daily eats from it too for the Torah teaches man to walk the path of truth and gives him counsel how to repent before his master even when he is sentenced to death everything is repealed and gone from him not to rest upon him therefore he should be occupied with the Torah day and night and not move from it this is the meaning of but you shall meditate there in day and night Yehoshua 18 if you remove the Torah from himself or separates from it it is as if he separated from life 3 come and see there is advice for man when he climbs into his bed at night he should accept upon himself the yoke of the kingdom of heaven wholeheartedly and hasten to give him the deposit of his Nefeshit was explained that this is since every man tastes at night the taste of death because the tree of death rests upon the world which is Malchut and all the spirits of people come out rise and hide in it in Malchut since they are given as a deposit they all return later to their place section 2 midnight Rabbi Yossi speaks about the obligation that people have to study the Torah at night and to cleanse themselves and go to prayer in the morning he says that every word that a man utters during his prayers rises up and splits the firmaments for come and see when the north wind awakens at midnight the crier comes out and the holy one blessed be he comes to the garden of Eden to be delighted in the spirits of the righteous and all the members of the queen's household and all the members of the chamber are roused to praise the holy king's eir and then the deposits of the spirits handed to her to Malchut are all returned to their owners most people Awaken from their sleep at that time and their deposits are returned to them all five the members of the highest chamber who serve Hashem take resolve and awaken to be occupied with the praises of the Torah they join the congregation of Israel which is Malchut until daylight when morning comes he together with all the members of the king's chamber comes to the holy king's eir and they are called the children of the king and queen this was already explained six when morning comes one should clean himself in every respect the cleanliness of both body and soul put on his arms namely the tzitzit and tefillin and endeavored by the holy king's eir and since at night he endeavored by the queen now in the morning he comes with the queen to join her to the king seven he comes to the synagogue cleanses himself by reciting the offerings and sings the praises of king david fastened with tefillin on his head and sits at the corners of his garment he recites the praise of david Taylor. 145 It was explained that he who prays before his master should stand when praying like the supernal angels and join those who are called those who stand by as written I will give you access among these who stand by Zechariah 37 IT behooves him to concentrate his will before his master and submit his petition 8 come and see when man rises at midnight from his bed to be occupied with the Torah a crier announces over him saying behold bless Hashem all you servants of Hashem who stand by night in the house of Hashem Tehillim 1341 now in the morning when he stands in prayer before his master the crier proclaims about him saying I will give you access among these who stand by 9 after finishing his prayer favorably before his master it was explained that it behooves him to deliver his soul with a willing heart to the required place namely Malchut man has many counsels about anything when he is in prayer all the words man utters in his mouth in that prayer rise up and cleave Ears and firmaments until they reach wherever they reach they are adorned on the head of the king who turns them into a diadem the friends explain that when a man asks the holy one blessed be he in his prayer he should meditate for it to be a prayer of supplication whence do we know that from Moses as written and I besought Hashem to arm 323 such is a goodly prayer section 3 one should cover one's eyes so as not to behold the Shechina we hear from Rabbi Yossi. That Rabbi Hamnadisab said anyone who does not keep his eyes lowered or closed during prayer will not see the light of the Shechina when he dies nor will he die by a kiss whoever stands in prayer should first praise God and then offer his own prayer and his prayer should unify night and day 10 come and see whoever stands in prayer should straighten his legs which has already been explained he should cover his head as one standing before the king and cover his eyes so as not to behold it. Shechina in his book Rabham Nadasaba said whoever opens his eyes during prayer or does not lower his eyes to the ground the angel of death comes to him earlier when his soul goes out when he departs from the world he will not see the light of the Shechina nor die by a kiss whoever treats the Shechina lightly is treated lightly when he needs her this is the meaning of for them that honor me I will honor and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed I Shmuel 230 11 you talk about he who beholds the Shechina when he prays yet how can he look at the Shechina and he answers it means knowing the Shechina is surely before him when he prays hence he must not open his eyes this is the meaning of then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall Yeshayah 382 where the Shechina rested for that reason there must be nothing between him and the wall when he prays this has already been explained 12 whoever stands in prayer should first arrange the praise of his master and then recite his own prayer for this is what Moses said first you have begun Devarim 323 and at last you recited his prayer I pray you let me go over it but 25 Rabbi Yehuda said what is the difference here in first saying Adonai spelled Allah Dalat Nanyat and then Yud Hei Vav which we pronounce Elohim namely Adonai Elohim you have begun he answers the order is so from below upwards since Adonai is Malchut and Yud Hei Vav is Zeir and he said it so in order to include the quality of day with night and the quality of night with day and unify everything together properly the quality of day is Zeir and the quality of night is Malchut section 4 you have begun to show Rabbi Yehuda says that Moses was in a sense a beginning in the world encompassing all the children of Israel the Torah the tabernacle the priests and levites the twelve tribes with their princes and the seventy members of the Sanhedrin he was absolutely perfect and attained what. No one else ever did as Moses was the beginning king Messiah is the ending because when he comes there will be perfection in the world Rabbi Shia talks about how Moses was told to prepare Joshua to succeed him as the moon cannot shine until the sun departs Rabbi Yossi tells us that although all the other nations of the world were given to appointed ministers Israel was kept by God himself as his own special portion and he gave them the great gift of the Torah 13 you have begun to show your servant Devarim 323 he asks what manner of a beginning is here in saying you have begun and he answers surely Moses was a beginning in the world in being absolutely perfect you may say that Jacob was perfect prior to Moses for the trees Zeir Anpin was perfected through him below as it was above because he had 12 sons that correspond to the royal borders of Zeir Anpin and 70 souls that correspond to the 70 branches in the supernal trees Zeir Anpin it is surely so but Moses Attained what no one else did by being more completely bedecked with many thousands and tens of thousands of people of Israel with the Torah with the tabernacle with the priests and levites with the twelve tribes with twelve princes appointed over them with the seventy members of the Sanhedrin he was completed in a whole body the secret of Tiferet that includes right and left for Aaron was to his right Nachshon to his left and he was between them fourteen for that reason it is written you have begun to show your servant your greatness namely from the right Aaron and your mighty hand of it namely from the left which is Nachshon we already learned that it was Moses therefore who was a beginning in the world and not Jacob you may ask who was the ending and he answers King Messiah is the ending because then there will be perfection in the world which was not the case for generations at that time perfection will abide above and below and all the worlds will be united as one and it is written on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah 149 15 and Hashem said to me let it suffice you speak no more Devarim 326 Rabbi Shia said the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses Moses let it suffice you to have joined the Sheshina from now on speak no more Rabbi Yitzhak said let it suffice you the light of the sun that was with you no more because the time for the moon has come which is Joshua and the moon cannot shine until the sun is gathered but charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him in 28 you who are the sun should illuminate the moon we have
Voice is the inner voice, the outer voice, and the voice of the words and the words and the speech that came out and spoke from within the fire. We learn that Yisrael did not want to hear directly from God, but only through Moses. This weakened the power of Moses and the power of Malchut. Lastly, Rabbi Lazar says that if a person does a wicked deed but has no evil intention, he is not punished. 18. And Hashem spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words. Devarim 412. Rabbi. Elazar said we have to examine this verse. It says the voice of the words. What does that mean? And he answers that it means voice is considered speech since every speech comes from it. The voice is zeir and pen and speech is malchut. But since words come from voice, malchut is called the voice of the words. Hence it is written and Hashem spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. Since speech comes from that place, malchut that is called fire and it malchut is called the voice of the words. 19. You heard since hearing depends on it on malchut since hearing comes from speech. Hence it is written. You heard this has already been explained and his master shall bore his ear through with an all. Shema 216 because he blemished that place called hearing which means both words and hearing. 20. You heard the voice of the words but saw no form. He asks what is a form and answers it resembles and the similitude of Hashem does he behold. Imid bar 128 which is malchut this was said to. Praise Moses who used to look at the shining mirror which is Zeir and hence the similitude of Hashem does he behold which is Malchut that reveals why you behave Bavhe according to another explanation a form is an inner voice namely Bana which was not visible at all not even to Moses only a voice Devarim 412 refers to another external voice as we said namely Malchut called the voice of the words and why is Bana called the form or similitude he answers because it manifests the body. Which is Zeir and called body that is the form of the six extremities the twelve borders and seventy branches etc which comes out from it from Bana 21 you may argue that another namely Malchut is also named thus a form why is it called the form he answers it is so for the other one is also called the form because the lower manifestations in Briya Yitzra and Asiya emerge from it for that reason Bana and Malchut are called supernal He and lower He because they are equal to supernal. Hey, I ask the secret of a great voice which was not heard again. Devarim 519 since its founts never stopped flowing because it is with Abba in a never ending union. All these voices were there when the Torah was given to Israel. The secret of the seven voices of Zeir and they all came out from the inner voice above all which is Bana since everything is suspended from it as they emanated from Bana 22. Moses spoke from himself the words of Deuteronomy lit. The second Torah of this has already been explained. He asks why it is so and answers supernal Chakma is called the embodiment of the Torah from which everything comes out into the inner voice which is Bana. Afterwards everything is settled and becomes attached to the place called the tree of life which is Zeir and called Moses the general and the particular come from it namely the written Torah which is Zeir and called general and the oral Torah which is Malchu called particular. They are also called the Torah and the second Torah Zeir Anpin is called Torah and Malchut is called the second Torah. It was therefore said that Moses who is Zeir Anpin spoke the second Torah which is Malchut from himself namely it emanated from Moses at first the first set of ten commandments came out from uninterrupted Bura namely from Bana which it is said a great voice which was not heard again now with the second set of ten commandments in the second Torah they came out all together that is from Zeir Anpin and Malchut according to the principle that Moses Zeir Anpin spoke them from himself for that reason all these ten commandments are spelled with Bob in neither have ye shall you commit adultery neither shall you steal neither shall you bear neither shall you covet neither shall you desire but 17 to 18 as Bob indicates Zeir Anpin 23 Rabbi Yossi said what is meant by neither shall you desire neither shall you covet should suffice he said to him blessed are the truly righteous coveting is one Great desire another coveting means that if he can he will grab her for the coveting that took him over will cause him to act desire is not so even when he will not take to following her it is still considered desire this has already been explained 24 Rabbi Yussi said to him why is not it written neither shall you murder spelled with Bob like the others he said to him for the level of murder is judgment and comes from Bura through the left column instead of from the place of mercy which is Zeir and called Bob hence you shall not murder if it 17 is without Bob since five Bobs are needed corresponding to Chesed Bura Typhoret Net Sash and Hot Bob was added to shall you covet since in you shall not murder no Bob should dwell because it is in Bura hence Bob was added here 25 Rabbi Pinches who sat behind Rabbi Lazer heard it he kissed him what and left he said of Rabbi Lazer who can stand before him and his father in the world happy is a lot of the righteous end. Happy is my own lot in this world and in the world to come to have merited of this. It is written the righteous see it and are glad. Yo 2219 26 Rabbi Lazar opened with Go you near and hear Devarim 524 come and see when the Torah was given to Israel. All voices were present namely from Bana Zeir Anpin and Malchut Bana is called an inner voice Zeir Anpin and outer voice and Malchut the voice of the words the Holy One blessed be he sat on the throne which is Malchut and one was visible from within another. Zeir Anpin was seen from within Malchut the words of the one Malchut came from within that which was above it. Zeir Anpin this is the secret of the verse Hashem talked with you face to face in the mountain out of the midst of the fire. Devarim 54 as Zeir Anpin and Malchut were face to face and speech came out and spoke from within the fire and the flame which are the left column that pushed the speech out of Zeir Anpin by striking up wind and water which are the Central and right columns that empower the left so that speech which is Malchut comes out from all three columns of Zeir Anpin for fire wind and water the three columns of Zeir Anpin came out of the Shofar Bun as it Bun includes them all Israel kept away from this 27 because of that because of that all Israel said to Moses and speak to us Sibid 24 saying we do not want this lofty force from above namely from Zeir Anpin but from the place of the female Malchut and no further this is the meaning of and speak to us with a feminine suffix Moses said to them you have surely weakened my power and weakened another power of Malchut for had not Israel distanced themselves they would have heard all those words from Zeir Anpin as before the world would not have been destroyed and Israel would have lived for generations 28 the first time after hearing the first words they died the reason is that it had to be so since the tree of death Malchut brought it upon them later. They were resurrected rose and grew by receiving Mokin of greatness the Holy One blessed be he wanted to bring them into the tree of life Zeir Anpin that is situated above that tree of death so they will live forever but they distanced themselves and refused as mentioned and the power of Moses who was above them weakened and another power of Malchut weakened the Holy One blessed be he said I desire to uphold you in a supernal place that you shall cleave to life yet you wish the place where the Nukbah dwells for that reason go say to them return again to your tents of it 27 each one will go to his wife and mate with her because they descended to the world of the female 29 nevertheless since Israel did it only because of the highest awe that rested upon them it did not say of them but oh that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me but 26 from this we learn that whoever does something but does not concentrate in his mind and wish on the evil side even Though it is evil since he did not do it on purpose there is no punishment for him and he is not like another who does it purposely and the Holy One blessed be he does not sentence him for evil section 6 but as for you stand here by me first we hear about the great qualities of Moses and Rabbi Yehuda says that if people are traveling on the road in fear of thieves the best protection is the study of Torah because this brings the Sheshanah to join them 30 but as for you stand here by me Devarim 528 from this we understand that he totally separated from his wife and cleaved and rose to another place of the world of the male instead of the female happy is a lot of Moses a faithful prophet who attained the highest grade such as no other man ever attained of that it is written he who pleases lit good before Elohim shall escape from her Kahilat 726 what is good it is Moses of whom it is written he was a goodly child Shema 22 since he was Good he rose to another high level the grade of Zeir Anpin and therefore it is written for the place on which you stand is holy ground Shema 35 you stand is precise the reason standing is mentioned is because it is good and good is the male which is Yezid of Zeir Anpin and standing pertains to the male 31 you may say that Rabbi Yehuda said that good is said of David as written good looking Ishmael 1
or three friends studying the words of the Torah is even more valuable because they do not fear robbers because the Shechinah is joined to them because they are occupied in the Torah. Section 7 Coats of Skin Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shia discuss whether Adam and Eve had coats of skin before they sinned and we learn that at first the man and woman were clothed in the likeness of above surrounded by celestial light only after their sin were they reduced to the clothing. Of skin that comes from the lower world in the future God will open the eyes of those who were unwise so that they will have supernal wisdom. Next the rabbis are followed by two robbers who are suddenly killed by two wild animals. 33 Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Shia were walking on the way. Rabbi Lazar said it is written for the man and for his wife did Hashem Elohim make coats of skin. Bereshit 321 were they divested of that skin until then he answers yes since until that time they did not have. These coats of skin which were precious garments Rabbi Shia said to him in that case they were not even worthy of coats of skin since they sinned by the tree of knowledge of good and evil you may say that before they sinned he clothed them with coats of skin yet it is not so only after they sinned it is written for the man and for his wife did Hashem Elohim make coats of skin and clothed them. 34 he said to him it is surely so that it occurred after the sin only at first they were clothed in the likeness of above namely with the supernal splendor of Zeir and Pen and were divested of the lower hues of this world and the celestial lights around them after they sinned he returned them to the colors of this world and removed from them the supernal colors they had from Zeir and Pen it is written for the man also and for his wife did Hashem Elohim make coats of skins and clothed them as in this world it is written and you shall bring the sons and put coats upon them Shema. 299 in the latter verse it bore resemblance to the supernal namely the light of Zeir and Pen while you regarding the coats of skin of Adam they bore resemblance to the lower for that reason they are called linen hebshish coats that alludes to Zeir and Pen that is called six hebshish after the six extremities in this verse there are coats of skin which pertain to Malchut that is called skin which bears the aspect of this world even though it is so the beauty of these garments surpassed everything. 35 and the eyes of them both were open Bereshit 37 which means their eyes open to the mold of this world namely to the regular model of this world which was not the case before when they were above observing with open eyes in the supernal world in the future to come it is written and I will bring the blind by way that they do not Yeshayah 4216 for the Holy One blessed be he will open eyes that were unwise so they will behold supernal wisdom and attain what they did not attain in this world so as to recognize their master happy are the righteous that will attain this wisdom since there is no wisdom as that wisdom nor is there knowing such as that knowing 36 while they were walking they saw robbers following them to rob them Rabbi Lazar looked at them and two wild animals came and killed them Rabbi Lazar said blessed is the merciful who saved us he recited about them when you go your steps shall not be confined and when you run you shall not stumble Mishlei 412 and because he has set his delight upon me therefore will I deliver him. Tehillim 9114 section 8 The four paragraphs of the Tefillin Rabbi Lazar tells of the supernal source of the four mokin in the head of Zir Anpin that correspond to the four paragraphs in the four compartments of the Tefillin the rabbis talk about the whole flow of mercy and supernal light the holy name Yadhei Vavhei and the various Firat are brought in to illuminate the discussion we learn. About the four pillars of the chariot that are the three patriarchs and David Rabbi Yitzhak says that God will not enter celestial Jerusalem until his people enter terrestrial Jerusalem. He also talks about testimony that is the flowing of the illumination of Chakma from supernal Eden 37. We learn from a supernal mystery in the concealed book that there are three cavities of engraved letters which are Yudhei Vav of Yudhei Vav seen in the skull of Zir Anpin and we learn that there are three parts of the brain Mokin, Chakma, Bana, and Dad which are hidden in these cavities. The cavities are vessels and the lobes of the brain are the lights that are clothed in them from the top of the highest concealed brain of Atika Kadisha that flows into the Mokin of that Zir Anpin. There are four Mokin, Chakma, Bana, the right side of Dad which is Tiferet and the left side of Dad which is Malchut. These four Mokin are in the head of Zeir Anpin and expand throughout the body. These are the four paragraphs in the four compartments of the Tefillin which the Holy One blessed be he puts on 38. One should put on Tefillin every day because they are the supernal holy name of engraved letters while you dehave off a namely the four Mokin is written and all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Hashem. Devarim 2810 we learn this is the actual name of Hashem. These are the head Tefillin 39. Rabbi Yitzhak said this is what is meant by the verse. Sanctify to me, have Kadeshli, all the firstborn, Shema 132. This is the sphere that includes and conceals all the others, namely Chakma, that includes inside itself all the Sphirot. The drawing of light from above is hidden within it. It is called whatever opens the womb of it because it opens the whole flow of mercy and supernal life. 40 Rabbi Shimon said the sphere of Chakma is hidden in the yet of the holy name while you dehave off it is one compartment of the Tefillin which is sanctified to me. All the firstborn, unspecific firstborn relates to the supernal part of the brain, Chakma 41. The second compartment of the Tefillin is and it shall be when Hashem your Elohim shall bring you Hebi Hayaki Yabiyashi Devarim 610. Rabbi Yehuda said this is the part of the brain, the gates of which become 50 gates, namely Bana, which expands into the 50 gates of Bana. These many gates correspond to the many mentions of the phrases who have brought you out of the land of Egypt and Brought you forth out of Egypt. The memory of the Exodus from Egypt is mentioned many times in the Torah. Fifty times that correspond to the fifty gates of Bana. For the Exodus from Egypt came through the illumination of Bana. There are therefore fifty to correspond to its fifty gates. Forty-two. We learn from the book of Rav Hamnan who said that the Holy One, blessed be He, broke many upper and lower gates that were bound by chains in order to bring Israel out of Egypt. For through these gates of the brain lobe of Bana, the other block gates were opened and loosened. Had not the gates of the brain lobe of Bana opened and aroused, the other block gates would not have opened to execute punishment against Egypt to bring Israel out of slavery. For that reason, the Exodus from Egypt was mentioned fifty times, which occurred by means of the fifty gates of Bana. Forty-three. Everything is concealed inside this brain of Bana, which is called supernal IMA, from which power was roused for lower IMA. Which is Malchut, what is that it is that of which is written and give ear to me, O my nation, have Leumi Yeshayah 514, which should be pronounced Leimi and to my mother rather than Leumi for the Holy One, blessed be he cherished the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut to the extent of calling her my mother. So Malchut received the lights of Super Leimi for these lights come out of Super Leimi, which is the second compartment of the Tefillin, which is called Hay of the Holy Name Yudhe. Vavhe that opened into fifty gates from this part of the brain, a wind goes out to a nostril in the window of the nose of Zir and Pen 44. We learned that the Jubilee in which slaves are freed is united with this brain lobe of Bana. The fifty gates of Bana are the fifty years of the Jubilee and the fifty days of the counting of the Omer unite with the brain lobe of Bana in which the spirits of the slaves rest and their spirit achieves freedom and rest as written the day that Hashem shall. Give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and from the hard bondage. Yeshayah 143 for that reason. First hay of Yudhi hay Vavhe which is Bana rests the spirit and liberates the spirit. The exodus from Egypt comes out from the second compartment of the Tefillin and the first hay of the holy name as we learned up to here. The first two compartments of the Tefillin all is about Yudhi of the holy name. 45 come and see from the aspect of Abba which is Chakma Chisit emerges and from the aspect of Ima which is Bana Bura comes out the holy one. Blessed be he who is Zeir Anpin is attached to them all and is adorned with them being the letter Vav for Zeir Anpin is the central column that comprehends the right and the left which are Abba and Chisit to the right and Ima and Bura to the left. 46 the third compartment of the Tefillin is Hero Yisrael Hev Shema Yisrael Devarim 64 which is Yisrael Saba together with and you shall love Hashem your Elohim with five Rabbi Shimon. Taught this is a high mystery that the supernal Israel which is Zeir Anpin was adorned with the aspect of Abba. This is Abraham adorned with the aspect of Ima. It is Isaac 47. We learned about and you shall love that he who
Evil are included, hence good things are written in the paragraph of it. It shall come to pass if you hearken, but in general it is harsh judgment. 49 The Bob, which is CEIR and receives these four passages, which are Chakma Bind the right side of that and the left side of that, and adorns itself with them, which means they become its smoke, and these are the Tefal and the Holy One. Blessed be he puts on. We learned that this Bob, CEIR and rises to Bind which is adorned with its crowns and one is attached to the other, namely its right column, its Chakma, and its left column, its Bind. It is adorned with them all. Bob, CEIR and is therefore in the center of everything above and below to display the completion of Chakma in every direction. 50 Rabbi Abba taught it is written only Hashem took delight in your fathers. Devarim 1015 from this Rabbi Shimon deduced that the fathers are the Holy Supernal Chariot, as is also written Hashem took delight. Come and see just as there is a Holy. Chariot below in Malchud, which is from the chest below of Zeir and there is a holy chariot above from the chest up of Zeir and Who are they? They are those we mentioned. The fathers called Chesed, Bira, and Tiferet. The whole is called the holy chariot because everything is interconnected and becomes one fifty one. Only Hashem took delight in your fathers, who you said were a chariot, or but three. Yet a chariot consists of four. Once do we get a fourth? And he answers from the verse, and he chose their seat after them. But he asks what it means, and answers that the purpose of the verse is to include King David with the patriarchs, being the fourth to be established in the holy chariot. For we learned that the patriarchs establish and perfect everything. They are the body, namely Chesed, Bira, and Tiferet, that are called body by them. The body is completed and built into them. It is attached, namely the body. Zeir and is mostly Chesed, Bira, and Tiferet in him, which are above the chest and are called the patriarchs King David came and perfected everything he established the body and perfected it through them by becoming a fourth the secret of Malchut that perfect Zeir and that is called body Rabbi Yitzhak said just as the patriarchs merited to be adorned with the holy chariot so did David merit to be established as a fourth pillar of the chariot 52 Rabbi Yehuda said it is written of David now he was ruddy with fine eyes and good looking Ishmael 1612 what is the reason he is called ruddy because the portion of his lot brought it on him since being a chariot to Malchut he was of the aspect of judgment like Malchut ruddy is certainly of judgment with fine eyes means judgment included mercy as written the sure loving promises of David Yeshayah 553 53 Rabbi Yitzhak said we explained about the sure loving promises Chesedim of David in its place they do not allude to the inclusion of judgment with Chesed but now he was ruddy means as we said that he his judgment with fine eyes refers to the patriarchs Jesus, Bura, and Tiferet that shine in the three colors of the I come and see Jerusalem and Zion are judgment and mercy yet it is written the city of David which is Zion I Melashim 81 which indicates that judgment comprehends mercy it is also written the Holy One is in the midst of you and I will not come into the city Hashia 119 which has been said to indicate that the Holy One blessed be he will not enter celestial Jerusalem until Israel will enter terrestrial Jerusalem he asks when this will take place Rabbi Yehuda said when the kingdom of David would return to its place below the Holy One blessed be he would enter celestial Jerusalem 54 Rabbi Yitzhak said there is a shin with three knots that is three heads and a shin with four knots namely four heads it alludes to three and alludes to four we spoke of the three namely the three patriarchs Jesus, Bura, and Tiferet the four include Malchut as well to form a holy Chariot together for Malchut is the inclusion of the supernal establishment since Malchut completes Zeir and from here the lower grades spread and flow by their ways and straps they come out of the hairs on the head suspended from them as all these other grades come down from them until they are tied in their place. 55 We learned that Bob Zeir and receives the supernal Mokin Chakmabana and Dad we mentioned which are the Tefilin the Holy One blessed be he dons for that reason. One should be glorified in them because Tefilin are called glory of them it is written and all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Hashem Devarim 2810 the actual name of Hashem the Mokin Chakma and Bindawa Yudhi and the right and left of Dad which are Bob Hades are the head Tefilin the hand Tefilin are the left called strength according to the secret meaning of Hashem has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength Yeshayah 628 the right hand. Is the Torah and the arm of his strength is the Tefilin Malchut receives from the strength the secret of the left column. This is why and it shall be for assigned to you upon your hand. Hebyadika Shemot 139 is spelled with extra hay. This is the hay we discussed. Namely, Malchut happy is the portion of Israel. Hence, the last hay Malchut receives the Tefilin being left because Malchut is built by the left column. Hence, she receives the Tefilin on the left arm. 56. He asks, Who are these four passages for which are one body for which reason they are included in one compartment? And what are they? He answers, They are Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid. Namely, the force from the chest and lower of Zeir and they are the hay and Yadika, which is Malchut for they all. All force fire, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid from the chest lower are attached to Malchut, so she would be blessed by them. Hence, she includes all force fire from the chest and lower of Zeir and 57. Rabbi Shia said, Yet it is written, and you shall see my back. Shema 3323. We also learned it is the knot of Tefilin. He said to him, We have already explained, and it is fine, and clarifies the matter. Hence, from this hand, Tefilin one strap hangs down, which indicates the lower beings are suspended from it and nourished from it. Hence, it is called a sign because it is attached to Yezid. This is the meaning of this is the token of the covenant. Bear sheet 917. It is also written, and it shall be for a sign to you upon your hand. Hebyadika with extra hay, which has already been explained. 58. Rabbi Yesus says that here, SH Mago Yisrael, Devarim 64 is Yisrael. Sab Rabbi Yitzhak said that the large iron in SH Mago includes 70 names, the secret of the name of 72 names, the 70 names plus the two witnesses. It is overall testimony, namely the flowing of the illumination of Chakma from Supernal Eden called testimony. Here, O Yisrael resembles the words, Your heavens, Yeshayah 12, and give your O heavens. Devarim 321 which means they should be witnesses here too. Hero Israel indicates to Mokin of testimony it all pertains to the same issue. 59 after explaining Hero Israel he goes on to interpret the other words in the verse Hashem is the top of all in the illumination of Atika Kadisha which is Chakma it is called Father namely Abba our Elohim is the depths of the rivers and streams from whence they emerge and flow on everything namely Bina from which male female and all lower beings receive and which is called Iamah the second Yod Hay is the trunk of the tree namely Zeir and which is the whole of the roots being the central column that includes Chakma and Bina which are Hashem our Elohim one is the congregation of Israel namely Malchut and everything all these Sfirot make one wholeness and are interconnected there is no division between them but all is one sixty Rabbi Yitzhak taught the supernal holy chariot Chakma and Bina Tiferet and Malchut. Are the four compartments of the Tefilin that Bob puts, which is Zeir and as we learned another holy chariot, Tiferet, Net, Sachat, and Yezid, are the four other passages included in one compartment, which are the Tefilin, the last hay of Yud, Hay, Bob, Hay puts, which is Malchut, as we explained, section 9, Upper Union and Lower Union. We are told that the purpose of the recital of the SH Mod is to unify the name of God. The unification perfects the ministers and officers of 248 worlds, all called body parts. We hear about the 613 commandments in the lilies and the secret of the apple tree among the trees of the wood. R.A.I. Mahim, the faithful shepherd, 61, Hero Yisrael, Hashem, R. Elohim, Hashem is one. Devarim 64, the commandment is to declare the unity of the name of the Holy One, blessed be he below, for as the name of the Holy One, blessed be he is unified below, so it is unified above us, the Holy One, blessed be he is one and only above and below whoever. Declares the unity of the name of the Holy One, blessed be he should direct his attention and will to the meditation lit unification we mentioned, namely unite his name below and connect all his limbs, namely the Sfirot, by means of the meditation so that they will all become one, for as one arranges all the limbs of the name according to a mystery below, so one connects all the supernal limbs by means of that meditation so they will all become one. 62 When man is about to unite the name of it, Holy One, blessed be he, all the
Blessed be he entered Adam into the Garden of Eden as written to till it and to keep it. Bear she 215 We learned that these are the two offerings according to the secret of Hashem shall be one and his name one. For in reference to these offerings it is written together lilies. These are the body parts of the two sides that are 165. The lilies are a mystery when these body parts are connected together so as to be all one by means of one meditation according to the secret of the offering the Holy One. Blessed be he is adorned with a crown of fine gold so as to be adorned with his honor. This is the meaning behind the word lilies which are the secret of all the body parts above and below the secret of that gold is that it is a crown that is adorned and rises from among them. There is everything in them in the lily 66. There are 613 commandments in these lilies which are the body parts of the two sides according to the secret of Hashem shall be one and his name one. Among them is the ascent of that gold that rises from among them wherever they are that is the unification of the body parts of both sides that supernal ascent of the crown of gold rises from among them this is the secret of the apple tree among the trees of the wood Hasherim 23 and the lily among thorns if it too as both the one and the other should rise as one by the complete meditation happy is he who sacrifices these offerings namely performs these meditations surely it is favorable to him both in this world and the world to come section 10 of the faithful shepherd says that it is a commandment to be in awe of God in a general way but that one should also be in awe of him in particular this means that he should feel awe out of love that is the base and foundation of the love of God 67 it is a commandment to be in awe of the holy one blessed be he in general and in particular he explains we explained ought to mean that man should be always in of the Holy One, blessed be He has written that you may fear this glorious and fearful name Hashem your Elohim. Devarim 2858 is a place called Om, namely Malchut, since there the of the Holy One, blessed be He lies, it is called the of Hashem because one should be in awe of Him. This is the secret of the verse and reverence my sanctuary. Vayikra 1934 in this Om, Malchut, a baton of fire dwells that strikes the evil who do not observe the commandments of the Torah since punishments come from Malchut, hence one should be in awe in general, namely fear of punishment 68, then one should be in awe of Him in particular, namely when man knows what the of Hashem is by attaining the quality of Malchut herself. This is out of love, which is the base and foundation of the love of the Holy One, blessed be He. This causes one to observe all the commandments of the Torah, so man will be a faithful servant of the Holy One, blessed be He as His proper. Section 11 Love Moses now says that it is a commandment to love. He tells us that whoever loves God maintains ten sayings and passes ten tests. We hear about great love and everlasting love and that the two are one without division. The faithful shepherd asserts that love surpasses every other kind of worship there is in the whole world. 69 It is a commandment to love. We explain that the love for the Holy One blessed be he means that man should love him with great love as did. Abraham who loved the Holy One blessed be he with great love and risked his body and soul for his sake. From this we derive that whoever loves the Holy One blessed be he maintains ten sayings namely ten spirat above and below. Hence all these ten tests Abraham underwent and withstood correspond to the ten sayings since every test is one saying namely one sphere and he was tested by that saying and withstood at seventy. There are therefore ten tests that correspond to the ten spirat and Abraham. Withstood them all because he was attached and cleaved to the right hand of the Holy One. Blessed be he that is called great love, namely Jesus of Zeir and It is called great love because whoever is in that state of love is attached to the supernal world. Zeir and everlasting love is the secret of the lower world, namely Malchut, to which the love of the Holy One. Blessed be he is attached. Everything great love and everlasting love is the same mystery without division between them. We have now learned the mystery of love that love surpasses every kind of worship in the world by love. The name of the Holy One. Blessed be he is honored above everything and is blessed. Blessed be he forever and ever. This is the clarification of the secret of love. Seventy one. It is a commandment to recite the SH twice every day once to correspond to the great of day, which is Zeir and once to correspond to the great of night, which is Malchut, so as to include the great of night and day and the great of Day and the night we have already learned this we therefore need twice daily once during the day and once at night section 12 the mezuzah we are told that a fixing a mezuzah at the door ensures that God will guard the inhabitants when they enter and leave another reason for the mezuzah is that it reminds people of God so they remember to do his will we hear how the evil demon that stands near the door is distracted so he cannot do any harm 72 it is a commandment that man should fix a mezuzah at his door so that everyone will be guarded by the holy one blessed be he upon leaving the house and entering the house this is the secret of Hashem shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore tell 1218 for the secret of the mezuzah always rest at the door which is the entrance to the higher being malchut the entrance to zeir and according to the secret of this is the gate of Hashem tell 11820 this great is Called guardian so one is guarded 73 for man is not guarded except by the Holy One blessed be he who constantly guards and is present at the door to the house while one is inside the house another reason for the mezuzah is that one must never forget the memory of the Holy One blessed be he this reason is like the tzitzit as said that you may look upon it and remember Bimidbar 1539 when one sees that reminder he is reminded to do his master's bidding the secret of faith is that the mezuzah includes a male and a female together 74 in the book of Solomon it is written near the entrance against the two grades comes a certain demon that has permission to harm it stands at the left side of the door man lifts up his eyes sees the secret of his master's name in the mezuzah at the right side of the door and remembers it and the demon cannot harm you may say that if this is so it is true when one comes into the house but when leaving the door of the house outside the demon too. The left side of the door is at the right side of the man and the mezuzah to his left how is man guarded then if the mezuzah is to his left 75 and he answers all that the holy one blessed be he does follows its own kind there are two grades to man one to his right and one to his left the one to the right is called the good inclination and the one to the left is called the evil inclination when one goes out of his house's door that demon lifts up its eyes and sees the evil inclination. Dwelling at the left side it is attracted to that side where the evil inclination abides namely the left and is removed from the right then at the left side rests his master's name namely the mezuzah and it cannot approach him to cause him harm and that man goes out and is saved from it upon coming into the house the holy name in the mezuzah is to his right and thus the right overpowers the left and it cannot prosecute him 76 one must therefore be careful not to soil the door to his house. With filth and refuse or spill dirty water for two reasons the one is not to desecrate his master's name in the mezuzah and the other is that then that fiend namely the demon has permission to cause harm for that reason man must be careful about it and take care not to push away his master's name from the door to his house 77 when man fixes a mezuzah at his door when he enters his house the evil inclination and the demon guard him in spite of themselves and say this is the gate of Hashem into which the righteous shall enter to live 11,820 when there is no mezuzah at a man's entrance the evil inclination and that demon grow strong and come together and place their hands on his head when he enters and begin to say woe to so and so who went out of his master's domain from that time on he is not guarded and there is no one to guard him may the merciful one save us section 13 sh and bless be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever this section talks about the unification of the two names Yad Hei and Elohim the first by the meditation Shema Yisrael and the second by the meditation beginning blessed be the name this concept is applied also to the Torah that consists of the written Torah and the oral Torah the first being general and the second being particular the unification spoken of here pertains to the Torah to the names of God to the above and the below to Zer and and Malchut to remember and keep to night and day and to right and left it is the unification of everything finally we are told how the Tefillin relate to this topic 78 here Shema Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim 64 is one meditation let unification and blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever is another meditation so that his name which is Malchut called name should be of the same secret according to the secret of Hashem he is the Elohim I Melashim 1839 Yud which is Zeir and Pen is Malchut called Elohim. This is written when Zeir and Pen and Malchut are unified together. Hence, S.H. Mal Yisrael is the secret of Yud Hei Vav and blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever. Is the Elohim 79. You may say that in that case the meditation of S.H. Mal
When the two names become one and are mutually included in each other and everything becomes one complete name then it is written Hashem he is the Elohim for then everything is included in each other to be one but before they are unified each on its own they cannot be mutually included to be all one in such a way that Hashem shall be one and his name one is not equal to Hashem he is the Elohim but the latter is the result of the former as explained 81 the generality of the whole. Torah namely the written Torah and the oral Torah together is surely that way for the Torah is the written Torah and is the oral Torah the written Torah is as written Hashem namely Zeir and the oral Torah is as written the Elohim which is Malchut since the Torah is the secret of the holy name it is therefore called thus the one is called Yud Hey and the other the Elohim 82 the written Torah and the oral Torah the one is general and the other particular the written Torah is general namely Zeir and while the oral Torah is particular namely Malchut the general needs the particular and the particular needs the general the one cannot reach perfection without the other until the two are joined they unite with each other and everything becomes one therefore the generality of the whole Torah is the generality above Zeir and and the generality below Malchut since that name exists above and that name exists below the one the written Torah is the secret of the supernal. World Zeir Anpin and the other the oral Torah is the secret of the lower world Malchut hence it is written to you it was shown that you might know that Hashem he is the Elohim Devarim 435 where both are one this includes everything all worlds all that we said should one know in this world 83 you may ask where the commandments of the Torah are in this inclusion whether Hashem he is the Elohim includes everything he answers the one while you behave Abhay is remember while the other the Elohim is keep all the commandments of the Torah are included in these in the mystery of remember and the mystery of keep remember includes the 248 positive commandments and keep includes the 365 negative commandments and everything is 184 Rabbi Yussi opened with the fact that we learned that the evening prayer of it is obligatory is surely so because the Holy One blessed be he is unified at night through the Sh just as he is unified during the day the quality of night is Included in day and the quality of day is included in night and unification takes place whoever says it is optional it is because the prayer was composed to correspond to the portions of the sacrifices and the fatty parts that are consumed and burned at night which are not obligatory for the morning prayer shasherit and the afternoon prayer minchit correspond to the two daily offerings which are obligatory but the evening prayer corresponds to the portions of the sacrifices etc which are optional we have already explained at 85 it is written and you shall love have have to hashem your Elohim devarim 65 we have explained this verse and so did the friends but we should ask if everything right and left is included in this meditation of shma yisrael why it is then written and you shall love which is the right end and it shall come to pass if you hearken have yeah i'm shamo a devarim 1113 to 17 which is left if they were already included in the meditation of kriyat shma and he answers there in cry at shma it is part of the general where the right and left of that were comprehended into a general principle and here it is of the particular at first it is written and you shall love in itself which is Jesus and then and it shall come to pass if you hearken which is pure and so it should be 86 in the secret of the meditation we remarked on the meditation of cry at shma is like the meditation of the head tefillin and the hand tefillin in the head tefillin. There are four passages which we have already learned and here in cry at shma there are three names why you dehave off here elohim why you dehave off here there are four passages each on its own and here there are only three names what is the difference between them section 14 the four passages of the head and hand tefillin we learned how there can be four passages in the tefillin yet only three names in the cry at shma the numerology of the 25 letters in the shma the 24. Letters in the unification that begins with blessed be the name the 49 gates of Buddha and the 25 things used to complete the building of the tabernacle are all explained in detail Rabbi Abba asks Rabbi Shimon about the letter straps of the tefillin comparing it to skin Rabbi Shimon gives him an explanation and then says that when a person studies the Torah all night and then puts on the tefillin in the morning when he goes out of his house wearing the tzitzit and passing the mezuzah on his doorpost then he is escorted by four holy angels that go with him to the synagogue we are also told about the artistic work of people who create the tefillin the tzitzit and the mezuzah Rabbi Shimon closes by saying that if people really knew the Torah they would know that there isn't a single letter or word of it that does not contain supernal secrets 87 he answers it has been remarked about these four passages that one namely sanctify have Kadesh Li Shemot 132 is the first point namely Yud. Of why you dehave Abhay, which is Chakma one namely, and it shall be when Hashem your Elohim shall bring you Habiha Yaki Yabiyacha Devarim 610 is the secret of the world to come, which is by one namely here Habes Hma Devarim 64 is the right side of that, and one which is, and it shall come to pass if you hearken Habiha Yaim Shamoe Devarim 1113 to 17 is the left side of that, they are the secret of the head tefillin here in the secret of Kriyat Shma, this unification of the three supernal names why you dehave Abhay or Elohim, why you dehave Abhay resemble the four passages of the tefillin, the first Yud Hav is the supernal point, the beginning of everything, namely Chakma or Elohim is the secret of the world to come, namely by the last Yud Hav is the entirety of right and left of that, together as one whole, these are the order of the head tefillin, and the first meditation of Kriyat Shma 88, the hand tefillin are the entirety of these four passages together, namely in one. Compartment and this is the secret of the second unification in Kriyat Shma which I ask blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever here in the second unification is the whole of the four passages of the head tefillin comprehended in the hand tefillin in one compartment that means that the unification of blessed be resembles the unification of the four passages of the hand tefillin 89 the secret is as follows blessed is the secret of the supernal point which is Chakma which is blessed because all blessings flow from there you may argue that the world to come is called blessed which is by this is not so because the supernal point Chakma is male and the world to come by is female and hence he the male is called blessed and she the female is called the blessing blessed is masculine and blessing is feminine and therefore blessed is the supernal point namely Chakma name is the world to come namely Bino, which is a great name as written and what will you do for your great name? Yahashua 79 glory is the supernal glory, namely Dad, which is right and left of Dad, which are all included in the hand tefillin, namely in Malchud, which is the secret of the word his kingdom. Malchud receives everything within her, and thus all the worlds were comprised to be nourished and fed in what they need, which is the meaning of forever and ever, forever. Habia ad means food as in in the morning he shall devour the prey. Habadi Bershid. 4927 forever live for the world and ever means that Malchud feeds the whole world. 90 this is also the unification of the head tefillin and the hand tefillin, since just like the secret of the unification of the tefillin, so is the unification of everything. This clarifies the matter, and this way have I arranged this meditation before the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon, and he told me that this meditation of Kriyat Shema is arranged in four manners, and that this order is the clearest of them all. The Secret of unification exists in them all, namely in Kriyat Shma and other things, but the order of the Tefillin is a proper supernal meditation. 91 And since the right and left of that is included in the secret of the same name in Kriyat Shma, namely in the last Yud Hav in a general way, one should utter them after in a particular manner, namely, and you shall love Habi Yah have to Devarim 65, and it shall come to pass if you hearken Habi Yah, I am Shamoe, each on its own, but not by way of unification, because unification was already performed in the earlier verses here. Have Shma and Blessed be so that Hashem shall be one in the head Tefillin, and his name shall be one in the hand Tefillin, which is the unification of Blessed be, and everything became one once the unification is arranged in its entirety from the top of the supernal point, one should then adorn it from the top of the primordial line, which is the top of everything, namely Keter 92 Moses engraved and Composed 25 letters by means of the unification of the verse that says here O Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim 64 there are 25 engraved letters engraved by the supernal secret namely the secret of Zeir and since 25 indicates the 22 letters of the Torah and the Torah of the prophets and the writings which are the three columns as shall be written Jacob wanted to compose below in Malchut by the secret of unification and composed it with 24 letters which are blessed be the name of the glory of his
Unification of completion in the tabernacle which is Malchut hence it is written and your pious ones shall bless you Hebyabarka Chitelim 14510 which is spelled as shall bless Hebyabarka which is the secret of the completion of the tabernacle and the building of it 9425 stands for the 22 letters and the Torah of the prophets and the writings as 3 plus 22 equal 25 they are one whole one mystery when Yisrael perform this unification according to the secret of the 25 letters in this verse which are Yero Yisrael Hashem are Elohim Hashem is one and the unification of blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever which has 24 letters and when one directs his attention to each of them all letters join together and amount to a single connection which are 49 words that correspond to the 49 gates in the secret of Jubilee which is by the one and should continue the unification to the word ever but no more since in the word ever the reckoning reaches 49 and the 49 gates of Bina open and the Holy One blessed be he considers that man as if he maintained the whole Torah that comes all in 49 manners 95 one should therefore direct one's will to the 25 letters of the SHMA and the 24 of blessed be and elevate them with the desire of the heart by the 49 gates of Bina that we mentioned after meditating on that one should meditate on the unification our master spoke of that hero Yisrael and blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever are the entirety of the whole Torah happy is a lot of he who meditates on them surely it is the entirety of the whole Torah that is above which is Zeir and and below which is Malchut this is the secret of Adam which is the perfection of male and female namely the perfection of Zeir and and Malchut this unification is the secret of the whole faith and of our AI Mahin the 96 Rabbi Abba sent to Rabbi Shimon saying to him that which your master explained about the Tefillin of the master of the universe that the four passages are the holy of holies namely Chakma and Bina and Tiferet and Malchut of that is well whence do we deduce the leather on the Tefillin and the straps that are considered holiness he sent to him for the man also and for his wife did Hashem Elohim make coats of skins Bereshit 321 leather is precise namely Malchut that is called skin this is the way Rabham Nadesava explained that these belong to the head as the four passages are the form of kin of Zeir and Pin and the leather is Malchut of Zeir and Pin in the hand Tefillin upon your hand Hebyadi Kashemot 139 is spelled with A to indicate that the four portions are the Mokin of A which is Malchut this has already been explained 97 Rabbi Shimon said some teach it this way and it shall come to pass if you hearken is the left arm of the Holy One blessed be he and is considered the sphere of Bura in that case only three passages are left in it. Had sanctified to me all the firstborn and it shall come to pass if you hearken and hear O Yisrael Devarim 64 which are Shachmabana and the right of that the fourth lobe of the brain which is the left side of that I is missing you claim that and it shall come to pass I is in the sphere of Bura which is in the body yet there are four lobes of the brain in the head but there are two holy chariots of Shachmabana Tiferet and Malchut the one of the hand Tefillin is connected to the heart which is Malchut and the other of the head Tefillin is connected to the brain which is Zeir and thus the fourth passage of the head Tefillin is also in the brain namely the left side of that and not in the body the heart and the brain which are Zeir and and Malchut are connected to each other into one union the friends have spoken well that and it shall be for a sign to you upon your hand refers to Malchut as we learned that Malchut is only called a sign since the hand Tefillin are the Mokin of Malchut 98 Rabbi Shimon said when man prods himself to rise at midnight and studies the Torah until daybreaks and in the morning puts on Tefillin on the head and Tefillin on the holy sign namely Tefillin of Malchut on the arm and when he wraps himself with it sits it and is about to go out the entrance to his house he meets the mezuzah which is the imprint of the holy name which is Malchut at the gate to his house then four holy angels join him and go out with him from the door of his house and escort him to the synagogue they declare before him give honor to the image of the holy king give honor to the son of the king to the countenance of the king the holy spirit dwells on him and declares saying Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 99 that holy spirit then rises up and testifies before the holy king the supernal king then commands to write before him all his household members all those known before him this is the meaning of and the book of Remembrance was written before him for those who feared Hashem and took heed of his name Malachi 316 who are those who took heed Hebshashvei of his name they are as those in and those who devise Hebshashvei artistic work Shema 3535 here to those who do for his name works of art in any way the art of the Tefal in their compartment and straps and writing them the art of the tzitzit and the fringes their threads the blue thread and the art of the mezuzah these are those who took heed of his name as in devise artistic work 100 moreover the Holy One blessed be he praises himself with him and declares about him throughout the world see what my son has achieved in my world whoever enters before him into the synagogue after leaving his door without Tefal on his head and sits it on his garment yet says and in the fear of you I will worship towards your temple Tehillim 58 the Holy One blessed be he says where is the fear of me he bears false testimony 101 Happy is a lot of Moses who said here in SHMA Yisrael our Elohim for Rabbi Shimon said Moses was attached to a higher grade than the rest of the faithful prophets Rabbi Shimon also said if men knew the words of the Torah they would know that there is not a word or a letter in the Torah that does not contain supernal precious secret section 15 our Elohim your Elohim Rabbi Shimon talks about the voice of Moses that is the voice to which he is attached he explains the difference between the curses that Moses uttered in Leviticus and those in Deuteronomy we hear that God gave the commandments to Israel so that they would be saved from the prosecutors 102 come and see it is written Moses speaks and Elohim answers him by a voice Shema 19 19 we learn that by a voice refers to the voice of Moses this is well and the voice of Moses is precise namely the voice to which he is attached which is Zeir and by which he surpasses above all the other prophets who are attached only to Malchut and not to Zeir and since he is attached to that voice which is Zeir and more than all the others by that voice which is the supernal grade he said to Israel Hashem your Elohim which is a great called the Shechinah that dwells within Israel which is below the grade of Zeir and to which Moses is attached happy is his lot 103 Rabbi Shimon also said we learned that Moses uttered the curses in Leviticus in the book of Baikra from the mouth of Bureau which is Bina that is called supernal Bureau those in Deuteronomy he uttered with his own mouth could you possibly imagine that Moses would speak even a small letter in the Torah from himself 104 and he answers this as well and we remarked that we did not learn it as from himself but as from his own mouth what does this mean it is that voice to which Moses was attached namely Zeir and hence these in Leviticus were from the mouth of Bureau which is Bina that is called Supernal Bureau while those in Deuteronomy were from his own mouth namely from the mouth of the great to which Moses was attached more than all the faithful prophets which is the great of Zeir and hence it is always said your Elohim since it alludes to Malchut that is below Zeir and but here in SH Israel it is said our Elohim since it alludes to Bina that is above Zeir and to which Moses is attached 105 come and see how much people should guard their way so that they will be occupied with the worship of their master and merit everlasting life underneath the throne of the holy king which is Malchut there are supernal compartments and to that place of the throne which is Malchut the Mezuzah is connected to save man from many judgments the purpose of which is to awaken people through them similarly the holy one blessed be he did to Israel by giving them the commandments of the Torah so they will endeavor in them and be saved in this world from many prosecutors and those that bring charges who meet people daily section 16 waste water before the door Rabbi Shia tells us that people must not spill waste water between the door posts because a demon lies there and sees everything that is done in the house and the waste water will give him permission to cause harm we are told about the role of the mezuzah and Rabbi Shia says that wherever the holy name abides people are safe from the accusations of the evil ones 106 Rabbi Shia said whoever wishes to observe his ways must not pass waste water before the door because a certain demon lies there between the two door posts facing the door it sees whatever is done in the house hence one must not spill water between the two door posts Rabbi Yitzhak said clean water is not forbidden but it must not be spilled with contempt the reason is that if the demon has permission to cause harm moreover it turns its head towards the house and whatever it
Masusa at the door of his house and this holy name Shade is imprinted with its letters that man is adorned with his master's crowns and the evil species do not come near the door of his house or rest there. 110 Rabbi Abba came from seeing Rabbi Shimon when Rabbi Itzhak met him he said to him once do you come man of light a man who cleaves daily to a consuming fire light dwells with him and he need not seek anyone he said to him we learned that man is obligated to welcome the Shechina. Every first day of the month and every Shabbat what is that it is one's Rabbi all the more so the holy supernal luminary Rabbi Shimon whom the whole world should welcome Rabbi Itzhak said let me return with you to Rabbi Shimon and welcome the Shechina and taste from those lofty matters you tasted before him section 17 O you who dwell in the heavens Rabbi Shimon explains the inner meaning of the 123rd Psalm telling us that as the author is not mentioned it is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is speaking about Israel in exile. Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Abba discuss the Mezuzah some more, and then the marks by which Israel are recognized as the children of God. 111. Rabbi Abba opened with the song of ascent to you. I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Tehillim 1231. It is not written who recited the song, but wherever the place is undisclosed and the author is not mentioned, it is the Holy Spirit which is Malchut that said it about Israel in exile. You who dwell at Heshvi should have used the more common form Heshvi. Why does it use Heshvi 112? And he answers, We have explained that whoever wishes to say his prayer before the Holy King should ask the deepest, namely Bina, to bestow blessings downwards as written. The song of ascent out of the depths. I have cried to you, Hashem. Tehillim 1301. That extra yet in Heshvi is the deepest of all Bina and is the one from which he should request to pour blessings to. That place called heaven which is Zeir Anthem so that everything will be sustained by it hence it is written who dwell in the heavens namely in Zeir Anthem that is called heaven since when the blessings pour and come out of that deepest place which is Bina and settle in the place called heaven namely in Zeir Anthem there are blessings in the higher and lower 113 as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters Tehillim 1232 he asks what are the eyes of servants and answers they are the other ministers of the nations which are the seventy supernal ministers which are nourished only from the residue of the boughs of the tree which is Zeir Anthem to which Israel cleave when Israel receive blessings from that place everyone is blessed from Israel 114 and as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress it refers to the maid we mentioned whose power the holy one blessed be he slew in Egypt namely the verse the firstborn of the maid servant Shema 115 for she has power only when it comes from the residue of bounty of the land of Israel which is Malchut the land of Israel is called her mistress the mistress of the maid of this it is written for three things the earth is disquieted Mishlei 3021 the earth is the land of Israel which is Malchut as we learned this slave when he becomes king of it 22 refers to the servants we mentioned the 70 ministers of the nations this was said when power was given to one of them this is the meaning of who have brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage Shema 202 namely from the enslavement to the ministers of the nations a handmaid that is heir to her mistress Mishlei 3023 refers to the maid we spoke of, of whom it says the firstborn of the maid servant 115 come and see many litigant spirits came out of the aspect of that maid which denounce Israel and come to prosecute them and the holy one blessed be he guards Israel like a father who wishes to guard his child from all things the Holy One blessed be he said to Israel many prosecutors are ready against you be occupied in my worship and I shall guard you from outside you shall be encased in your houses from within and sleep on your beds and I shall guard you from outside and around your beds 116 come and see when these evil species approach a man's door they lift up their heads and behold the holy name that is seen from outside which is shade decorated with its crowns this name has power over them all and they fear it and flee and do not approach man's door 117 Rabbi Yitzhak said in that case man should mark that name Shade at the door of the house and no more why the need for the whole passage in the mezuzah he said to him this is well for that name Shade which is yes it is adorned only with all the letters that are marked with the king's mark namely that are written in the mezuzah when the whole passage is written that name is adorned with its crowns and the king's eir and Comes out with all his armies all imprinted with the king's mark which is Malchut then they all fear it and flee from it 118 come and see in and it shall come to pass if you hearken have Bihayah and Shamoe Devarim 1113 to 17 Bihayah is a holy name while you dehay Bavhe from below upwards because it is spelled Bavhe first and then while you dehay for that reason the name Shade is written on the outside against that name the name Bihayah is on the inside and Shade is on the outside so one would be guarded from all sides from within and from without Rabbi Abba said many holy hosts stand ready at that time when a man fixes a mezuzah at his door they all declare saying this is the gate of Hashem Tehillim 11820 119 happy is a lot of Israel for Israel are then recognized as the children of the holy king since they are all marked by him marked in their body with the holy imprint of circumcision marked in their clothing by it they are marked on their head with the compartments. Of the Tefillin which are their master's name and marked on their hands with the straps of holiness they are marked in their shoes by a precept fulfilling shoes namely of the Pascal sacrifice as written your shoes on your feet Shemot 1211 and the Shalitza they are marked in the field by sowing and harvesting marked in their houses with the mezuzah on the doorpost in everything they are marked as the supernal king's children happy is their portion section 18 they have forsaken me Rabbi Abba talks about people who are false to the sign of the holy imprint he says that the idol worshipping nations are broken cisterns but that Israel is a well from which living waters are drawn anyone who is false to the holy imprint prevents the well from being blessed we hear that only a virgin is blessed with seven blessings 120 while they were walking Rabbi Abba said in the verse they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and have hewn them out cisterns your Maya 213 they have forsaken me refers to he who is false to the sign of the holy imprint how is he false to it by placing it in the domain of another as written and has married the daughter of a strange El Malachi 211 who are called broken cisterns for the idol worshipping nations are called broken cisterns 121 that of Israel which is Malchut is called the well the fountain of living waters this is the holy domain of the holy faith which is Malchut that is called the well of springs of clear water that comes out and pours from it as written and streams from Lebanon Sher Hasherim 415 and also running waters out of your own well Mishlei 515 and the fountain of gardens a well of living waters Sher Hasherim 415 the other side is called broken cisterns that can hold no water your Maya 213 122 come and see the river that flows and comes out which is Yezid waters the whole garden Malchut and waters each and every place as we explained until it fills the place of it garden that is called the well of living water which is Yezid of Malchut whence the higher and lower are nourished as written and from thence it was parted Beersheet 210 123 none of the aspects of the left side are watered from that spring of gushing water because they are from the aspect of the other nations and are called broken cisterns whoever is false to the holy imprint by that side cleaves to broken cisterns that can hold no water because it does not flow in there whoever merits to keep it merits to be watered by the stream of the river in the world to come and merits that the supernal well will be filled and blessings will be drawn above and below happy is he in this world and in the world to come of this it is written and you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not Yeshua 5811 124 woe to him who is false to the holy imprint because he is false to the supernal name moreover he causes the well Malchut not to be blessed he is called he has brought out an evil name upon the virgin of Israel Devarim 2219 the virgin of Israel is precise that is Malchut that is called the virgin of Israel because she always reverts to being a virgin Rabbi Shimon explained in its place that whoever lays accusing speeches against his first wife and brings out an evil name against her is like one who brings out an evil name against the higher Malchut as written he has brought out an evil name upon the virgin of Israel unspecified which refers to Malchut 125 this follows the interpretation of Rabbi Shia in the name of Rabbi Yossi that a virgin receives seven blessings because she is blessed by seven Sfirot since the virgin of Israel which is Malchut inherits seven blessings which are the secret of seven Sfirot she is therefore called the daughter
Children of Israel who were lost who lost their faith will come again to worship God on the holy mountain at Jerusalem 127 he opened with the verse and it shall come to pass on that day that a great chauffeur shall be blown and they shall come who were lost in the land of Assyria and the outcast in the land of Egypt Yeshua 2713 and it shall come to pass on that day what is that day and he answers it is that day known to the Holy One blessed be he has written one particular day which shall be known as Hashem Sekeria 147 on that day is as in on that day when God shall come against the land of Israel Yeshua 3818 128 a great chauffeur shall be blown he asks what difference does it make to us whether it is a great or small chauffeur and he answers it is a supernal chauffeur by which slaves are always free this is jubilee namely bina which is a supernal and great jubilee when it is aroused to bestow plenty every kind of freedom of the world is aroused through it. And it is called the great chauffeur 129 and they shall come who were lost let they who lose in the land of Assyria he asks it should have said they who were lost or they who are lost what is meant by they who lose he answers it is they who actually lose because they are in another land and whoever dwells in another land is nourished by another domain and it is as if he does not live in faith this is why they are called they who lose since they lost their faith they lose in every direction above and below since when Israel dwell in the holy land they are righteous and always merit everything the plenty of Zeir and above and the plenty of Malchut below but when they are out of the holy land they lose all that 130 according to another explanation they shall come who lose are the righteous Yezid and the congregation of Israel which is Malchut who are called they who lose whence do we derive this it is written of the congregation of Israel why does the land Perish or lose your 911 namely Malchut that is called land it is not written that it is lost or was lost but that the land which is the congregation of Israel loses it is written of the righteous the righteous perishes or loses Yeshua 571 hence the righteous and the congregation of Israel are called they who lose as we explained 131 you may ask in reference to shall come where they who lose come from the righteous and the congregation of Israel which are Yezid and Malchut. And he answers the congregation of Israel comes from exile the righteous as we explained in relation to the verse when Hashem brought back the captivity of Zion Tehillim 1261 is Yezid called Zion so it shall return to its place and come to join the congregation of Israel hence they shall come who were lost in the land of Assyria he asks what is meant by and shall worship Hashem on the holy mountain at Jerusalem Yeshua 2713 if they who lose are Yezid and Malchut and he answers this. Praise and shall worship refers to the outcasts in the land of Egypt who shall worship Hashem since Israel do not come out of exile except with the Shechina so to speak as we explain these outcasts shall worship Hashem which is the Shechina section 20 Hashem shall preserve your going out and your coming in Rabbi Abba explains what is meant by the title verse and he talks again about the importance of the mezuzah in protecting people from evil 132 Rabbi Abba continued it is written Hashem shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore Tehillim 1218 he asks preserve your going out is correct but what is meant by your coming in for whoever enters his house is not afraid and needs not be kept he answers the man who places the holy mark in his house with the words of the supernal name namely the mezuzah is kept from everything when that man goes out of his apartment to the house gate he lifts up his eyes Sees the holy mark and looks at the gate when he leaves it escorts and guards and when that man enters it pronounced before him take care of the honor of the king's image all this because of that mark of the holy name that is marked on his door 133 not only is a man kept in his house the holy one blessed be he keeps him when he comes in and goes out as written Hashem shall preserve your going out and your coming in happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come 134 come and see woe to the man who does not know how to beware of the evil spirit that lies between the doorposts and does not mark the gate to his house with the holy supernal name namely the mezuzah to be with him for that evil spirit has 365 evil prosecuting officers in the 365 days of the year each serves on its day they are all present with him with that man throughout the days of the year and denounce him above and below they are all with him day and night they prosecute him by day and by night. Distress him in his dreams 135 when it is about to denounce him when he enters his house they put their hands on his shoulders and say to him woe to so and so who left his master's domain woe to so and so in this world and in the world to come for that reason the faithful should be marked in every way marked with their master's imprint namely with the precepts so every aspect of evil species shall fear them and so they will be kept in this world and in the world to come happy is a lot of Israel it is written of them your people also shall be all righteous they shall inherit the land forever Yeshua 6021 section 21 and you shall love Hashem your Elohim Rabbi Yossi talks about the pleasure that God takes in the children of Israel when they are in their own land and the anguish he feels when they are in exile Rabbi Yossi emphasizes that there is no worship like the love of God Rabbi Abba concurs saying that love is the essence of the Torah he says that you must love God with both your good and your evil heart and with your good and your evil soul. Rabbi Abba gives the example of Abraham who gave up his own wishes, his son, his wife, and his money for the love of God. This is why he was given the crown of Jesus and why all the worlds were blessed for his sake. Rabbi Yossi tells the rabbis that the righteous have many dwellings in the world beyond and the highest of all is for those who are connected to the love of God and their chamber is connected to the highest chamber that is called love. Everything is called love and therefore whoever loves God is connected to that love. 136 and you shall love Hashem your Elohim. Devarim 65 Rabbi Yossi opened now therefore whatever here says Hashem that my people is taken away from not. Yeshua 525 come and see the love of the Holy One. Blessed be he for Israel even though transgressions caused his departure from among them and they dispersed among the nations he demands satisfaction. For their insult come and see when Israel live in their land and the Holy One blessed be he takes delight in his garden Malchut and comes near Israel and hears their voices he praises himself with them 137 when their transgressions caused Israel to become exiled from the Holy Land the Holy One blessed be he does not enter his garden Malchut and takes no delight in it moreover he cries out and says now therefore what have I here says Hashem it is written elsewhere here will I dwell. For I have desired it Tehillim 13214 as here in the latter is the Shechina so here in the former is the Shechina my people is taken away for naught is the same as you were sold for naught Yeshua 523 138 ever since the day Israel was exiled from their country there is no joy before the Holy One blessed be he this is the meaning of I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering Yeshua 503 all this is for the love the Holy One blessed be he has for. Them is written I have loved you says Hashem Malachi 12 hence and you shall love Hashem your Elohim and you shall love means that man should be connected to him with supernal love that at every worship man should serve the Holy One blessed be he let him perform it with love for there is no worship like the love for the Holy One blessed be he Rabbi Abba said these things namely love are the essence of the Torah since the Ten Commandments are included here the friends have already explained. In 139 come and see nothing is more precious before the Holy One blessed be he than he who loves him properly this accords with the verse with all your heart Devarim 65 what is meant by all it should have said with your heart and also with your soul and with your mind what is with all your heart and he answers its purpose is to include two hearts a good one and an evil with all your soul Abidias with two souls a good one and an evil with all your mind Abidias literal end. Needs no interpreting Rabbi Lazer said even this needs interpreting the reason is that whether he receives money as an inheritance or from another source or whether he earns it it is written of it with all your mind 140 Rabbi Abba said let us return to the verse and you shall love whoever loves the Holy One blessed be he is adorned with Jesus on every direction does kindness with everyone and cares not for his body or money we derive that from Abraham as we learned who for love of his master had no pity on his own heart soul or money 141 he explains his words his own heart means that Abraham did not pay attention to his own wishes for love of his master his soul means that he had no pity on his son and his wife for love of his master his money means that he used to stand at the crossroads and prepare nourishment for the whole world for that reason he was adorned with the crown of kindness namely the sphere of Jesus as written loyal love had Jesus to Abraham Mitchell. 720 Whoever is connected to the love for his master merits that moreover all the worlds are blessed for his sake. This
They told me it is that of those who love their master in that world namely this world from what my soul has seen my heart is illuminated hence my face is smiling 143 Rabbi Abba said happy is your portion yet the Torah bears witness to them as written neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you should do such a thing for him that waits for him Yeshua 643 Rabbi Yehuda said to him the friends have inquired why it is written should do in the third person instead of the second. Though it is written beside you in the second person 144 he said to him we have learned that yet its secret is the words to behold the beauty of Hashem and to inquire in his temple Tehillim 274 we have explained that the beauty of Hashem is a plenty coming from Atika Kadisha which is Keter in which the Holy One blessed be he takes delight for that beauty comes out of Atika to inquire in his temple refers to the highest temple by Nahir to neither has the eye seen that an Elohim. Beside you should do who shall do that most hidden Atika for that plenty comes from it hence should do I as written in the third person he said to him it is surely so happy is the portion of those whose master's love cleaves to them their portion in that world is immeasurable 145 the righteous have many dwellings upon dwellings in that world and the highest apartment is for those to whom the love of their master is connected for their dwelling is connected to the chamber that surpasses. Everything the reason is that the Holy One blessed be he is adorned with it with love 146 come and see this highest chamber is called love and everything is based on love is written many waters cannot quench love sure hashirim 87 everything is based on love because the holy name yud hey bab hey is this way for we have explained that yud of yud hey bab hey which is chakmit's higher tip which is keter is never separated from it since keter rests on it with love and never separates from it is for hey of yud hey bab hey which is bun it has been explained that yud which is chakmit never separates from it and they are together lovingly not separated from each other such as hey of yud hey bab hey as we learned that it accords with the words and a river went out of eden bear she 210 the river is bun and eden is chakmit bun always comes out of chakmit and they cleave always with love 147 when bab hey which are zir and bun and malchu cleave to each other with love. Together a groom with a bride who are customarily always in love and yud is with hey hey with bob and bob is with last hey mutually attached with love everything is called love and therefore whoever loves the king is connected to that love hence and you shall love Hashem your Elohim section 22 all my bones shall say Rabbi Yitzhak talks about the Psalms of David and tells us that at the time of the redemption God will fix each person's bones and draw them into place he also says that the evil inclination is as hard as a rock but the good inclination is flesh as we read in and I will take away the stony heart and I will give you a heart of flesh 148 and these words Devarim 66 Rabbi Yitzhak opened all my bones shall say Hashem who is like you who delivers the poor from him that is too strong for him and the poor and the needy from him that robs him Tehillim 3510 David said that verse by the Holy Spirit he asks all my bones shall say who has Seen bones reciting poetry and he answers this verse was said of the time the Holy One blessed be he will resurrect the dead and the Holy One blessed be he will fix the bones and draw each to its place as written and the bones came together bone to its bone Yashiskal 377 and and make strong your bones Yeshayah 5811 and Yisrael will recite poetry 149 he asks what kind of poetry will they recite and answers Hashem who is like you this poetry is more valuable than the one Yisrael recited by the sea because they mentioned the Holy Name only after three words as written who is like you Hashem among the Elim Shemot 1511 but here they put the Holy Name first as written Hashem who is like you who delivers the poor from him that is too strong for him refers to the good inclination who delivers him from the evil inclination since the evil inclination is hard as a rock is written and I will take away the stony heart Yashiskal 3626 and the good inclination is flesh as written and I will give you a heart of flesh of it section 23 at first the evil inclination is like a guest rabbi Shia talks about the way the evil inclination insinuates its way into a person's life until it becomes his master he says that one must constantly keep the words of Torah in his heart because it is thus that the evil inclination can be conquered 150 come and see what the evil inclination is like when it comes to join man it is like iron before it is put into the fire after it is heated the whole of it again becomes like fire 151 rabbi Shia said when the evil inclination comes to join man it is like a man who approaches the gate and sees there is no one at home to detain him it enters the house and becomes a guest seeing there is no one to prevent it to send it on its way once it entered the house and no one prevents it it is in charge over the house and becomes the landlord so that the whole house is at its disposal 152 whence do I learn that I learned it from the passage about David it is written and there came a traveler to the rich man too small 124 a traveler means he approaches the gate yet does not want to stay there but go on his way such as the evil inclination at first which like one approaching the house it approaches man and rouses him to sin a little only by coincidence when it sees no one prevents it it is written to prepare it for the wayfaring man or guest that was come to him but now he becomes a guest who stays at the house which means it rouses him to sin more for a day or two like a guest that is kept at home for a day or two when it sees no one prevents it it is written prepared it for the man that was come to him but because it became the landlord as written the man who is the lord of the land bear she 4230 and Naomi's husband lived man wrote 13 such as the evil inclination who has become a man landlord over that man who was attached to serve it and the evil inclination does with him as it pleases 153 one must therefore constantly place upon oneself words of Torah so that the evil inclination will be broken by them for the evil inclination has no greater enemy than words of Torah hence it is written and these words shall be in your heart Devarim 66 your heart means your two inclinations since the good inclination is adorned with them and the evil inclination is subdued by them Rabbi Yehuda said what does a good inclination need words of Torah for he said to him the good inclination is adorned with them and the evil inclination when it sees that the man does not repent and does not care to study Torah it rises up and speaks ill of him this is the meaning of but fools shall get or raise shame Mishlei 335 section 24 the ten commandments are indicated in the passage of Kriyat S.H. Rabbi Shimon lists the ten commandments in Devarim chapter 6 that correspond to the ten commandments that Moses gave he says that Everyone who recites them fully twice a day is blessed 154 when Rabbi Shimon came he said surely the Ten Commandments are indicated in the passage of Kriyat S.H. Mahas has been explained it is surely so and these words to Baram 66 are the essence of the Ten Commandments hence there are Ten Commandments here that correspond to the Ten Commandments in the Torah there and you shall teach them diligently to your children one and shall talk of them two when you sit in your house three and when you walk by the way four and when you lie down five and when you rise up six and you shall bind them for a sign upon your arm seven and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes eight and you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house nine and on your gates ten to Baram 67 to nine so here are ten that correspond to the Ten Commandments therefore these passages are a great rule in the Torah happy is the portion of he who recites them fully twice a day since the Holy Name is properly sanctified by his mouth. Section 25 For he is your life and the length of your days the rabbis talk about the critical importance of studying and adhering to the Torah 155 Rabbi Cha was with Rabbi Lazar one night after midnight and they were occupied with the Torah Rabbi Lazar opened with For he is your life and the length of your days Devarim 3020 above all the precepts the Holy One blessed be he decrees when they entered the land of Israel was the decree of the study of Torah the reason is that the Shechina settles in the land solely with Torah nor does it settle above save with Torah which is Zeir and 156 for thus did my father say namely Rabbi Shimon the oral Torah Malchut is known only through the written Torah which is Zeir and the Shechina does not settle above except through the Torah study below as long as the Torah is with her the Shechina can be present in the world this is the meaning of For he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in it. Land the land in general I as Malchut but if it is not so but the study of Torah I as neglected it cannot survive as written why does the land perish and Hashem says because they have forsaken my Torah Yermeon 911 to 12 157 while they were sitting Rabbi Shimon lowered his head and said it is surely so I have found the secret in the book of Rabham Nanasaba who explained the following verse as referring to the congregation of Israel which is Malchut her food her clothing and her du
Eliezer said surely he takes counsel from his master namely he recites the wayfarer's prayer Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Ach sat down and prayed while that man stood in another place when they finished praying they went on their way and that man slipped off from them Rabbi Eliezer said this man is either a fool or his customs are improper he said let us be occupied with the Torah since it is time to be occupied with the Torah section 26 the wise shall inherit honor thee. Rabbis examine the verse the wise shall inherit honor but fools shall get shame and they decide that Egypt is not among those nations that can be punished through lack of rain because they are watered by the Nile but the Holy Land always drinks from heaven 159 Rabbi Laser said the wise shall inherit honor but fools shall get shame Mishlei 335 the wise shall inherit honor happy are those who study Torah before he started talking that man approached them Rabbi Laser said we must not interrupt words of Torah since whoever studies Torah merits to receive the inheritance of possession from above of the glory of the king's Eir and, and merits to receive the inheritance of possession in this world this is that which is called the glory of Hashem namely Malchut called this world which never ceases from them this is the meaning of the wise shall inherit honor that is they shall inherit Malchut which is called the glory of Hashem 160 he asks what is meant by but fools Shall get shame and answers come and see when man walks the true way before the Holy One blessed be he and is occupied with the Torah he inherits to himself that glory of Hashem many defenders and advocates are above over that man who all speak in his favor before the Holy King if that man does not study Torah and does not walk in his master's way he brings about prosecution over himself but that prosecutor roams the air and does not yet rise up thinking that man might repent after seeing that man does not repent nor wishes to study Torah he then rises up and speaks ill of him this is the meaning of but fools shall get or raise shame since he rises up and prosecutes 161 he opened and said and if the family of Egypt does not go up and does not come and they shall have no overflow Zechariah 1418 he asks why is Egypt different here than the rest of the nations it is written of them all upon them shall be no rain of it 17 yet here it is not written so and he answers it. Friends have explained that Egypt does not need rain because it drinks the waters of the Nile hence it is not among those in need of rain but another punishment shall come to them and it has been well said 162 come and see it is written for the land into which you go to possess it is not as the land of Egypt from whence you came out Devarim 11:10, where the river rises and waters the land but here it drinks water of the rain of heaven Ibit 11 for the holy land always drink from heaven. And when Israel were occupied with the Torah it used to properly drink and whoever withholds Torah from it it is as if he withholds goodness from the whole world they entered a cave on the way the man entered with them and they sat down section 27 face to face a stranger sits with the rabbis in a cave and speaks to them about Moses saying that he was distinguished from all other prophets in the world Moses was able to lift up his head and actually look at it. Supernal radiance while still retaining a settled mind as long as Joshua was with Moses he drew nourishment from Malchut and had no fear but after he was on his own he could not even look directly at a messenger from God 163 the man began by saying and Hashem spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks Shema 3311 in this verse the beginning does not fit the end nor does the end the beginning a word does not fit with another for at first it says and Hashem spoke to Moses face to face which is well then it says and he turned back to the camp of it which is not connected with and Hashem spoke then but his servant Joshua the son of Nun a young man of it what does that mean it has no connection to and he turned back to the camp Rabbi Lazar said surely the Holy One blessed be he wishes to honor us for now we are connected with the Shechina who shall not leave us whoever opened this opening let him speak 164 he said and Hashem spoke to Moses face to face with many. Supernal precious grades Moses the faithful prophet was distinguished from all other prophets in the world who were all before him as a monkey before man the other prophets used to look at the non-shining mirror yet they did not lift up their faces to behold but as written I was in a deep sleep on my face and my face towards the ground Daniel 109 moreover these things were not in the open for them 165 Moses the faithful prophet was not so for he beheld the shining mirror and stood his ground furthermore he used to lift up his head to look as one saying to his neighbor lift up your head and let your face gaze at mine so you shall know what I am saying so did Moses do who lifted up his head face to face without fear his face was lifted upwards and he was beholding the supernal precious radiance his mind and countenance did not change like other prophets since other prophets if they looked when prophesying went out of their mind their countenance changed and they knew nothing of this world 166 Moses was not so since Moses used to behold that very highest grade which is Zeir and, and did not lose his mind because when he beheld the precious supernal radiance immediately he turned back to the camp and talked with them about their needs his mind was settled as before and even more so hence after Hashem spoke to Moses face to face it is said and he turned back to the camp then it is said but his servant Joshua the son of Nun a young man surely he received from the tent for he was studying how to observe through the Holy Spirit as written and the child Samuel ministered to Hashem Ishmael 31 167 come and see as long as Joshua was with Moses he used to study and be nourished from within the tent which is Malchut and have no fear after he separated from Moses and was on his own it is written and Joshua fell on his face to the earth and bowed down Joshua 514 because he could not look this was before a messenger all the more so from another Place 168 This is likened to a man with whom the king deposited vessels of gold and precious stones as long as it was with him the servant of the house used to touch them and look at them once that man died the king left nothing with the servant but came and took his keepsake the servant said woe to me that I lost all these precious things when my master was alive they were all at my disposal 169 such was Joshua when Moses was alive he used to be nourished daily from the tent which is Malchut and had no fear after Moses died Joshua fell on his face and I since I am among you may look at words of Torah without fear after withdrawing from you I cannot look on my own section 28 and you shall teach them diligently to your children we read of a man's obligation to teach the Torah to his children and to be an example to them of how people should conduct themselves when they are guided by the Torah 170 he spoke further and you shall teach them Diligently have shenantum to your children and shall talk of them. Devarim 67 shenantum means as in your arrows are sharp. Have shenantum tailum 456 for a man should teach his son words of Torah as a sword which is sharp on its two sides so as to introduce into him sharpness and the joy of Torah and his heart shall not be in folly and shall talk of them means that all the things in the Torah each thing has its own way and shall talk of them he asks this verse should have been in the future tense and answers the man himself should conduct himself by them and behave so as not to deviate right or left 171 when you sit in your house Devarim 67 namely conduct himself in his house in the right way the correct way so that his household will learn from him he should deal with them composedly and joyfully and not cause too much fear in his house all his actions at home should be composed and when you walk by the way to be guided by words of Torah and he should correct himself through them is proper to conduct himself by way of the Torah which is like Jacob conducted himself on the way in three things for a present for prayer and for war he should pray to his master but words of Torah are more valuable than prayer 172 and when you lie down it means to conduct himself with fear of his master with holiness with humility not to be impudent before his master and when you rise up it means to give praise to his master who returned his soul for he is present before his master with many sins yet the holy one blessed be he did kindness by him and returned his soul to his body and you shall bind them as frontlets between your eyes Ibadate has been explained as referring to the dark hand which is the left hand which is darker and weaker than the right in the book of Agata it said Yadika and your hand means the hand have Yad of Koh which is Malchut called Koh as written so have Koh shall your seed be bear sheet 155 Section 29 The Four Compartments of the Tef Island We hear of how the friends who live in the South explain the four compartments of the Tef Island but the rabbis say they do not agree with their interpretation because their inclusion of the supernal keter as the first of the compartments is incorrect this is because the supernal keter includes everything we learn about the four passages in the brain and the four passages in the heart these are the four mokin of Zir and Ben and the four of Malchut Rabbi Lazer talks about judgment and mercy and says that one can always tell from which grade a prophet has drawn his prophecy 173 The friends who live in the
With these words the reason is that the supernal Keter includes everything and is not part of the reckoning of the four passages moreover and it shall be when Hashem your Elohim shall bring you derives from the exodus from Egypt which is that place where freedom is bestowed on slaves namely by the hence the way of our friends in the south is incorrect but we start from Chakma that sanctify to me all the firstborn I ask Chakma instead of Keter and it is so and the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and put on Tephil and there are four passages above and four below he explains there are four in the area of the brain namely there are the four Mokin of Zeir and there are four in the area where the heart dwells which is Malchut because the one is connected with the other Zeir and is connected with Malchut 175 men should be crowned with them because they are the supernal holy name namely Yud Hevav is written and all people of the earth shall see that you are called by. The name of Hashem Devarim 2810 Whoever is adorned with the supernal holy crown is called a king on earth and the holy one blessed be he is a king in heaven. This is the meaning of a king caught in its tresses. Sure Hashirim 76 Just as the holy one blessed be he is king above so is he a king below and you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house Devarim 69 so that the man shall be perfect in everything and perfect by his master's commandments marked above and marked below happy is. The lot of Israel 176 Rabbi Lazar opened and said I have found two verses and though it comes from one grade nevertheless they are not of the same grade the one verse writes thus says Hashem Seviat and Lord of hosts Shagai 17 and another writes thus says Hashem Elohim Yeshayah 77 what is the difference between them he answers when it is written thus says Hashem Seviat the matter comes with mercy and when it is written thus says Adonai Elohim it comes with judgment 177 he explains the issue in the verse thus had KOH says Hashem Seviat it is because KOH which is Malchut is blessed by the righteous who is Yezid and by Netzach and Had that are called Hashem Seviat then it comes out tempered because it issues from that place Yezid in the verse thus says Adonai Elohim this KOH which is Malchut is nourished from the aspect of judgment and from the place of supernal Bureau that is Bureau of Zeir and I have learned from my father that judgment is tempered. With mercy since it is written Hashem Elohim and Yud Hevav is mercy and Elohim is judgment 178 for Elohim is always Bureau Adonai is always lower Bureau hence it is recognized from the mouth of the prophet according to the name he mentioned from which grade he prophesied as he directed his attention to say something from its own place the faithful would then know once the matter is from section 30 curse Meraz the rabbis talk about the angel who will Take revenge on the enemies of Israel in the future, and we also hear about the stars in their courses fought against Sirah 179. Rabbi Acha opened and said, Curse Merah said the angel of Hashem Shoftim 523. Come and see this verse is secret among supernal secrets. When the holy king gave his house into the hands of the queen, he put her in charge over all weapons, lances, and slings, and over all his soldiers. This is the meaning of behold, it is his litter that of Solomon, the secret of Malchut. Sixty valiant men are round about it of the mighty men of Israel. Sure, Hashirim 37. It has already been explained that they are the secret of Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid from the side of Bura, each including ten. When the Holy One blessed be he wages war, he does so through these warring mighty men we spoke of. They are considered expert in war. Ibadate 180. It is written, They fought from heaven, the stars in their courses fought against Sirah Shoftim 520. We have learned. That when Israel were dedicated to exposing the holy imprint of circumcision in their flesh, the sword avenging the covenant which is Malchut gathered all its armies, all weapons, and all soldiers to wage war with Sisera, and the stars were pouring fire from above. Rabbi Shimon said that every star has its own name as written. He calls them all by their names. Tehillim 1474 181. The Holy One blessed be. He said to the stars, Prepare yourself to revenge on Sisera, the vengeance of my children too. Vengeance shall I take from them. The first vengeance is for the six hundred chosen chariots that he left to the ministers of Egypt so as to war against Israel as written. And he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt. Shemot 147. Another vengeance is for my children for their distressing them until now. For that reason, they were sentenced to two punishments: one with water and one with fire. With water as written, the Wadi of Kishon swept them away, shoved them 521 and by. Fire as written the stars in their courses 182 among those stars there was one who did not come for that vengeance and was eternally cursed so that when it starts to illuminate the other stars come and swallow it with its whole camp and they perish together as written curse Merah said the angel of Hashem he asks does that angel have permission to do that to curse anyone and he answers this is the angel of whom it is written and the angel of Elohim who went before the camp of Israel. Shemot 1419 it is he that all wars are his namely Malchut 183 because they did not come to the help of Hashem shoved him 523 namely when Israel came out of Egypt to the help of Hashem against the mighty men of it namely the mighty men who came to fight together with Sisera namely the sixty mighty men around the bed of Solomon the secret of this angel is that all punishment and all the king's wars are his responsibility hence it says the angel of Hashem this is the meaning of the angel. Who redeemed me, Beersheet 4816, namely Malchut, the friends have already explained that this angel will be lofty and precious in the future to come, thus the holy name will be magnified by this angel, the holy one blessed be, he will take revenge on the heathen nations of this, it is written, thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, Yashis call 3823, they walked until they reached Rabbi Shimon, when he saw them, Rabbi Shimon said, the Shechinah is here, surely it behooves us to be grateful to the Shechinah section 31, lo it is yet high day, Rabbi Shimon says that at the end of the exile Israel will return to the holy land through the merit of their study in the Torah, but this depends on their repentance, another explanation of the title verses that the day of exile was lengthened due to Israel's evil deeds, Israel cannot gather together until harsh judgment is removed by the holy Sphirot, we learn that the end of days refers to Malchut who shall be. Return to her place and the great mating that will take place between Zer and Ben and Malchut 184. He opened with the verse, Lo, it is yet high day, Bereshit 297. This verse has been explained that when Israel will rouse with repentance before the Holy One, blessed be he, they will return to the Holy Land and gather from exile by the merit of the Torah, since surely Israel will be in exile for but a day and no more, namely the day of the Holy One, blessed be he, which is eight thousand years long. Namely, the fifth millennium, this is the meaning of he has made me desolate and faint all the day, each 113. If they will not repent, then the Holy One, blessed be he, will say, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together without merits and good deeds, but there is one remedy for you, water the sheep of it, delve into the Torah, so they will be watered by the waters of Torah and go and feed them of it and go to a resting place, a good place, the pleasantness. Of your possession 185 according to another explanation lo it is yet high day is the day called the day of trouble and of trampling and of confusion Yeshayah 225 on which day the temple was destroyed and Israel fell into exile because of the evil deeds Israel do that day lengthens and increases this is the meaning of lo it is yet high day neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together because they lengthen that day of exile water the sheep is as we learned namely with words of Torah because through Torah Israel will come out of exile 186 what do Israel say we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together Bereshit 298 namely until all the rest of the supernal days namely the holy Sphirot will gather until they roll the stone roll the harsh judgment that on that day rules over the wells mouth of it for this reason the well which is Malchut is with us in exile as soon as that well will be exposed and that stone which is harsh judgment will have no power over it we may water the sheep of it 187 the holy one blessed be he at the end of day will return Israel to the holy land and gather them from exile the end of days is that which is the last of the days namely Malchut which is the last of the Sphirot called days during the end of days Israel suffer exile this is what is meant by when you are in distress and all these things are come upon you in the latter days Devarim 430 and an evil will befall you in the latter days lit the end of days Devarim 3129 the latter days is precise because it is the congregation of Israel which is Malchut which is in exile together with this end of days they receive punishment in exile with it the holy one blessed be he will wre
shadow which means the Holy One blessed be he wants the shadow and day to rest upon the earth 189 happy is the portion of he who sees him Messiah and happy is the portion of he who sees him not woe to him who shall be present when the great lion will demand to mate with his female and more so when they will mate together namely Zeir and Pen with Malchut at the time of redemption of that hour it is written the lion has roared who will not fear Amos 38 190 come and see at first it is written he shall mightily roar because of his habitation Yermea 2530 which is during exile when Zeir and Pen will come out to receive his mate Malchut it is said the lion has roared who will not fear Adonai Elohim has spoken who can but prophesy Amos 38 at that time it is written then Hashem your Elohim will turn your captivity to Barim 303 what is meant by turn and he answers the Holy One blessed be he returns the congregation of Israel from exile and the righteous returns to join. Its place then it is written surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name the upright shall dwell in or return to your presence Tehillim 14014 section 32 from the top of Atzala to the resurrection of the dead in this mission we read an esoteric explanation of the story of creation and the history of man that followed to conclude by each and we hear that at the time of the resurrection the vessels will be perfected and all sin will be removed from the world. 191 Mishnah to you sons of men men of wisdom men of understanding of voices calling whoever of you attained wisdom and knows that when the white head which is Keter prepared a second head which is Chakma that is imprinted from above downwards and from below upwards installed in the north direction namely the left column of Bina and adornment of a pond of water it imprinted in it the depth of the supernal abyss namely the depth of Bina called the supernal abyss that rises and falls inside it. A hidden grave descended with 1,500 imprints and 1,500 worlds 192 underneath it under Zeir and a beast of the field strolls namely Malchud which has ten horns namely ten lights the beast has eyes like human eyes and a mouth that speaks great things when it rises it walks by day and hides by night when it journeys the four shovels it holds in its hands tremble and sixty blows of fire travel with it each with a sharp edged sword on its hip 193 when he so desired to produce man to be. Ruler below he implemented in that beast which is Malchud fine dust included of all Sphira he blew on it and it spread to the four directions of the world that is it spread in the body to the four directions of the world four parts of the body rolled one of Netzach one down hot which are the secret of the lakes called Netzach and hot one to the north the left hand the secret of Bira and one to the south the right hand the secret of Chisid 194 a great and strong tree the tree of life. Namely Zeir Anpin was connected and joined to a comely bow which is Malchut the sight of which gladdens everybody as written beautiful for situation the joy of the whole earth Tehillim 483 it united with it and they produced a certain spirit that filled that dough of dust and man rose on his feet he made him king over the whole world and ruler over everything this is the meaning of you make him to have dominion over the works of your hands Tehillim 87 he was ordered regarding that tree the tree of knowledge of good and evil not to eat from it but he did not observe that command the king brought back the spirit of man to himself and that beast which is Malchut took that spirit from man 195 Zeir Anpin and Malchut prepared another vessel namely another body and man rose between them with a the connection of Nefesh and Rash that are engraved among the holy angels that were united with the forming of the angels crowns 196 the following generations were punished for their sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and were sentenced to death that eventually their spirit is pulled out of their vessel and garment namely the body and the body dies it is then buried in the dust among the clods of the valley that is the grave derived from the clods of the valley shall be sweet to him yyob 2133 and all the dead were hidden and concealed in one strong bone remaining from that vessel namely the bone of loose that does not rot in the grave from it they will be reconstructed again and rising groups and they will come again to the land of Israel that is by means of rolling in tunnels they will all come to the land of Israel where the completion of their resurrection will be achieved 197 the holy one blessed be he will need that earlier dust of that actual vessel namely the body that was prior to the sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and introduce into it the finest dough like leaven in the dough from that dough which is the highest Clarity the complete vessel will be constructed and straightened like the verse says and the fountain shall issue from the house of Hashem and shall water the valley of Shittim well 418 for that fountain increases love in the world and when that holy fount will emerge and enter at the valley of Shittim it will be constructed and made right and not be in its state of sinfulness 198 those who have no merit will rise to be judged by the trial of the supernal king this is the meaning of and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt Daniel 122 then it is written for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me says Hashem so shall your seat and your name remain Yeshua 6622 blessed is the name of Hashem amen amen.